Next, we're going to move up to the nameplate. So we'll start with the top of the nameplate over here and sort of work our way down. So we'll start with what's called a catalog number here and then a, uh, a spec number, all the details on that particular motor itself. Next is horsepower. So this is a 1.5 or 1.5 horsepower motor. Next is voltage. So this often causes a lot of confusion because there's many different voltages out there. There's single voltages, there's dual voltage, there's tri-voltage, and this does happen to be a tri-volt motor. So if we look at that, we'll see that it's 208-230 slash 460. And so we'll start with the, with the slash. So basically the slash means that there's two different ways to wire this motor. Everything to the left of the slash is what's called low voltage, and we can see that up here, which we'll get into more detail there in a minute. And to the right of the slash, that's what we call high voltage, and then we would follow this wiring diagram here called high voltage. The other thing that is in here, we can see the dash. Of course, we can't have another slash because that would mean that there's three different ways to wire this, which there isn't. There's only two different ways to wire it. There is a dash, and oftentimes that gets confused with a minimum because your typical standard tolerance for motor voltage is plus or minus 10% of the nameplate. So that often gets confused with a minimum which technically would be 207 volts, but people think, well, that's close enough, it's 208. But no, this means that this can handle a true 208 supply coming in. And we can see down here that it is also confirmed that it's usable at 208 volts. So that is your voltage. Next is amperage. So the amperage corresponds to voltage. And that's why you see the same designations with the dash and the slash. So first you have to know what is the incoming voltage. With a 208 voltage supply, the amperage that corresponds to that is 4. With a 230 supply, it's 3.8 amps. And with 460, it's 1.9. So you see the, that corresponds to the voltage that you have coming in and also you have wired that to either low or high voltage. Next is RPM, it's 3500 RPM motor. Next is the frame number, this is a 56C frame. There are some specific details of exactly what that means in terms of the frame size, but for now we'll just leave it as a 56C frame, 60 hertz common in the U.S. And this is a three-phase motor. Super important, we need to know three-phase versus single-phase. Next we'll move on to something called the service factor. Not all motors have service factors. This motor does have a service factor and it is labeled and it's in this particular case it's 1.15 service factor. So you could think about that in a number of different ways. You can go 15% over the nameplate horsepower. You could actually multiply that out to get the technical maximum horsepower. So that's service factor. Next you'll see is the code. Now this is a NEMA designation, National Electrical Manufacturers Association designation of the locked rotor KVA per horsepower. And that's very important to know that it's per horsepower. So it starts with the letter, so you'd have to go to the NEMA website or just look up the NEMA designation letters and you're going to get a value. In this case it's L. So you look up NEMA code L, it's going to give you a value, an amperage value, or it might be a range of values. So if you did want to know the exact locked rotor amperage, you would have to look up the letter, 
look up the corresponding value and multiply by horsepower because remember that's locked rotor KVA amperage per horsepower. The DES period is the design of the motor. Now there's only four, there's A, B, C, and D. And this happens to be a, a NEMA B design, which is very common for us. This over here is class. That's another NEMA rating of the insulation temperature of the windings. And again, it's, it's a lookup, so you'd have to look up what actually F is in terms of a specific temperature, but that is your winding temperature. Next, we're going to move on to the NEMA nominal efficiency. That's 84%. Naturally, you can imagine there that the higher the better in terms of the efficiency of the motor. One thing to keep in mind, if you did want to know the cost of operation, you would need to know the efficiency of the motor as well as the efficiency of the pump. That would be a lookup on the technical manual. So you would need to know both. So here we can see that efficiency of the motor. Next we see power factor. Power factor, it's a percentage, and in this case it's 85%. The higher the better, and that is the ratio of the real power to the apparent power. So next we see a rating, and that's 40 degrees C ambient temperature, and again, looking at uh, another reminder that this is usable at 208 voltage. Next we see the, the bearing, so there is a DE, a drive end bearing number, and then an ODE, an opposite drive end bearing number there. Next is, what type of motor do we have? And we can see that's a TEFC, and that's totally enclosed fan cooled, so you can kind of see the design of that motor. Last here is the serial number. So this can get a little tricky because, you know, this of course is a, is a vendor item, so they, they don't use our serial number system. So one way to find that is to, you know, contact technical customer service, or you could look up in what we have called the uh, warranty guidebook, and they have all of the vendor information and how to decipher the date code of that particular vendor's serial number slash date code system. In this case here, we see an X that's particularly, in this case, that's a modification center, and the next two digits, that's the date code. So you can see that's a, a 2016. We just grabbed this motor out for an example. And the next two digits are the month. So that's 11 of 2016. Again, that's the date code of that motor. Very important for things like, like warranty, right? One other thing to note here is, recall earlier we talked about this has a service factor. So if it has a service factor, it's going to have service factor amps. Now in this case, it is not listed on the nameplate, but if a motor has a service factor, it has service factor amps. Just in this case, it is not listed on the label. 